Well, I hope y'all are ready to fight some fungal disease on some tomatoes or prevent it. So I'm gonna show you my recipe and tell you how to use it and then you will be good to go to help fight all kinds of the leaf spot and stuff like that on your tomatoes. All right, so before you treat your tomatoes, we need to understand what causes the disease on the tomatoes. And so basically what I'm focusing on here is like a septoria leaf spot, um, any kind of like leaf spot disease, stuff like that. We need to be able to identify it and know what causes it. So I'm gonna come over here. So my tomatoes over here are done. We know that. And this, I'll explain everything to you here try and make it as concise as possible. But what causes these diseases? So generally speaking, and at least in my area, what causes it is um, excessive water on the foliage, humidity, super high humidity levels. I mean, right now it's just about to rain, super humid. It's been like this for like a couple weeks. And it's like I've said in a previous video, every year we have this situation occur. And I've actually been able to figure out like my first set of tomatoes because I grow determinant tomatoes, whatever. But my second set right here, because they're really coming to fruition in the humidity and stuff like that, we need to really stay on top of it. So I did see it a little bit on here and I wanna show you what it looks like. All right, so if we come here and you see this right here, see how it's got the yellow around the dead spot? That is the beginnings of uh, leaf spot disease. And so if left untreated or taken care of, it will spread to this whole plant. Usually it does start at the bottom because it's where all the moisture is and then it'll, as it grows, it grows up. And so the best thing to do and the first thing we need to do is just kind of go through the plants and remove all of that. So that's gonna do two things. One, that's gonna take the disease out of there Two, it's gonna create airflow around your plants and really help to kind of mitigate that issue moving forward. And then also what it does is it'll kind of rejuvenate the plant as well, tell it to redirect its energy in different ways. But when you have determinant tomatoes like we do, you don't wanna take a whole lot off. So that's where we get into treating. And I'm going to give you the recipe, but first, because I know how people are, hell, I know how I am. If I got the recipe, I'd be out. But I do want to tell you how to use it first so you can do it correctly because you can't just make this stuff and just spray it on. There is kind of like a step up process. What I like to do is I like to come out and find myself a leaf that has it on there. Okay, so let's say maybe this leaf, something like this isn't even a good example. I don't really have it too terrible, but I would like to pick a leaf and then focus on it. So just for grins and giggles, let's say this is the leaf that we're gonna use. So I would use this leaf and I would monitor this in itself and you can do a lot of things. Pull out your phone and take a picture of the leaf and stuff like that and really focus on that one because this is gonna show you the progress of the treatment then if it's working or not working and how it's affecting your, your plant and how if it's acting negatively or anything like that. So what we do is we're gonna take, and I'm gonna show you what I use. Come over here and you're just gonna use regular old peroxide. This is the stuff that you put on cups. It's 3% peroxide, safe to use, all that stuff. And I want you to take note of this bottle. So this is in a brown bottle. So the brown bottle is important in all of this because hydrogen peroxide is what we're gonna use and it's simply hydrogen peroxide and water. So it's in a brown bottle because sun breaks it down. So you really wanna come out on a day, if it wasn't raining, like right now when it's cloudy, and you're gonna to wanna to spray this thing. And what I do is I start, and my mixture I'm gonna give you is for a gallon of water. So I don't recommend using like a spray bottle because it's get, switching everything up and trying to dilute and convert just gets really confusing. So what I like to do is I use this sprayer. So this is a two gallon sprayer. I'll fill it up to a gallon. And I'm gonna start with one tablespoon. You can even go as light as like a half a tablespoon of peroxide per gallon of water. 
And then I just wanna come out here and I wanna spray my plant down. So I would coat this entire plant in the evening or when it, especially on like a day when it's cloudy because then it can sit on there and it can really affect the disease. So what it does is it makes an inhospitable environment for disease to thrive. And, and actually I have seen it treat the disease in minor cases. So like those over there that we saw and I showed you a clip of earlier that are all brown and stuff, there's no hope for those. This will not treat that. But what it does is it'll put an acidic environment onto this plant and it won't let the disease thrive and can actually reverse it again. So I start with one tablespoon and I'm gonna spray it all down, tops, bottoms, ends, outs, just coat the entire tomato plant completely. And then wait a couple days and come out. And what I wanna do is I wanna come back to my leaf and check it. And so really what you should do is I'm gonna give you the appropriate, like this is what you should do, but I'm gonna, then I'm gonna tell you what I do do, is you should spray like one leaf or one limb and then test it, but I don't do that. I've never done that. The first time I did it, which was about four years ago, I sprayed it on real light mixture and just crossed my fingers and it was so light. I think I may even start it at like a half a tablespoon and there was no issue. So then I stepped it up to a tablespoon, sprayed it again, stepped it up, another half a tablespoon and sprayed it again and then stepped it up to a max of five tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide per gallon of water. But it's important to remember that if you're going to do this and the sun's out and it's hitting your plants, it has zero effect. Zero. It will not help your plants whatsoever. You have just wasted your time and resources. If you do it and it's going to rain, right afterwards, even though it's cloudy, like right now it's cloudy and you would think, hey, now's a good time, but it's gonna rain and it's already raining a little bit. Zero effect. It will not help. It doesn't do anything for you. And so, plus the other thing is if you think you're gonna come out here and not trim this plant at all and spray it down, you're not gonna have an issue. You are dead wrong about that. I mean, look, this is not, an opportunity for us to get lazy in our gardens and not come out and trim plants and just say hey it's going to fix it and everything's going to be good that is not the case this is a method to help with all of your other methods circled together to help prevent and and i'm going to say possibly treat because i don't like to say that it is going to treat it because i don't want you to try and be like well hey it didn't work i had it and then it's, it's even worse because you do have to remember this, a lot of times you're gonna come out here in the evening and you're gonna spray this plant and the, the sun's down, whatever, it's going down. It's not totally dark, but it's behind, you know, whatever, the sun's not directly hitting the leaves and you're gonna spray it. That can actually make it worse because you're leaving that water on your plant at the same time. So if you look at my tomatoes right here and you can see, I have one, two, three, four. We're just gonna focus on ones on the back four plants and you look in between each plant what do you not see you do not see where there is any airflow coming in there but if we come over here and we look at the bottom you can see how i've created some airflow and i need to do it again but one more trimming and we should have it I need to be very clear about this you have got to have airflow in these humid environments in order to combat this disease or prevent it in any measure in your tomatoes. If you do not have the airflow, no matter what you do, especially if you overhead water, you are going to get the disease in your tomatoes. And that's just an unfortunate thing, but we can do a little bit of trimming and we can make it happen. And plus trimming makes everything get bigger and just redirects the energy away from stuff that wouldn't normally grow and it can get us more fruit. So it's like a win-win situation. Not gonna trim this tomato now, but I'm gonna show you if I was going to trim, let me just pick one here, like this one right here, I would come in and I would just simply remove this and this, like all the way down, anything right here. And then that air can come through here. You know, if I come here, this is an unfortunate one because there's a couple things I can do. This is a leader, a sucker that has grown out, so I can kind of pull it back 
and then just trim these little ones here, you know? Like just doing that, you can see how much it's made. Here, I'll trim this one out for you. I changed my mind. So see that? See how it's creating the airflow through here? And so we can continue to go all the way around and do that. Now the one thing that is tough to do, and especially like if I pull this one over and hold it to here, like I'm gonna tie it to here, I'm gonna jam everything up in here so I can come in here and remove some of these little side leaves and stuff. Like see this leaf right here? Look, let me pull this out. See, that leaf right there is not going to do any good in there. It's all tore up. I mean, hell, it's all hidden in there, and look what's in it. Larvae and everything else. So that's not going to do any good. So we can go through and remove this stuff out of here. And it's a lot better to remove it when there's not a lot of disease on it and you're not, like, in full panic mode. So, um, again, this is the recipe. Hydrogen peroxide, regular from the store, one gallon of water, Start with, let's be safe and say half a tablespoon. Spray, see how it does. Come back in a couple days, put a tablespoon in, spray, do it again, remix it, do another, you know, keep going up until a max of five tablespoons to one gallon of water. And you don't have to hit that max. If you see improvement, especially on that one leaf we're watching, then you know at this point you're safe to move forward and you don't have to stop. I, usually I get to about three tablespoons per gallon and I'm good to go. So you can try that out, see if it works. This works for leaf spots and stuff like that. Do your trimming, do your treatments and get those tomatoes. Good.